What's going on YouTube? Kurt S7 here and I kind of wanted to make a video about Louis Van Hal before I make a video about Mourinho because I know Mourinho, probably the time you're watching this, Mourinho has probably been announced. If not today, definitely tomorrow. I reckon before the weekend, that deal is going to be wrapped up. It's going to be official. United will announce Mourinho and he'll officially be a United manager. But before all that, I wanted to talk about Van Hal. I really wanted to do this video because I want to talk about, you know, the negative stuff with Van Hal, but also the good stuff that he did, you know. Obviously... I, I'm an advocate for, you know, Jose Mourinho to come in to United because at the end of the day, mate, we have to watch this stuff week in, week out and the style of play that Van Hal played. But we'll get into that in a second and, and, and that's why I want Jose Mourinho. Ultimately, I do want Jose Mourinho as Manchester United manager. So I'm quite happy and I, and I wrote some note, uh, notes down about Van Gaal and, and the points I want to make about him because... There's two sides to Louis Van Gaal for me. You know, you got your positives and negative. Now, positives, the things that I wrote down for Louis Van Gaal in his two-year reign, probably the best, the best thing that Louis Van Gaal has done um, since coming to United was developing the youth players. You know, the gems that Louis Van Gaal found in the two years, especially more this season than last season, are uh, unbelievable. You know. United have been known for their youth academy, the players th th that come through the club, you know, the class of 92, we're famous for that at United, we love it, and Louis van Gaal continued that tradition, that tradition that people might reckon Jose Mourinho is not going to be living up to that, those expectations, but you look at the players that Louis van Gaal found, Rashford, Jesse Lingard, alright, Jesse Lingard's been there, you know, at United a while, but... Jesse Lingard's never been a first team player up until this season, so I consider Lingard, you know, Louis Van Gaal pushing him through. Cameron Ball with Jackson, you know, CBJ, he's how good's he come along this season at left back. Timothy uh, Fos um, Mensa, another great player. Uh, James Wilson from last season. Uh, Paddy McNair from last season. Tyler Blackett from last season. There's a lot of. I could keep rambling on these youth players, but at the end of the day, it was. Louis Van Gaal, that gave these young fellas a chance. Yes, there was some young players that he didn't give a chance to. Uh, Memphis this season, Adnan Yanezai, uh, Andres Pereira didn't get a chance. But there's always a good or bad one, Van Gaal, when I'm looking at him. The things I always look at, you know, like the other good positive thing that I want to talk about is the defense. We had, the, I think, the second best defense in the Premier League this season. Do you remember what our defence used to be like when uh, David Moyes took over? I think he has done a marvellous job, uh, Van Gaal, with our defence. Turning, and, and, and we haven't bought that many good quality players in our defence to be like, yeah, top quality centre half is, he sorted us out. Not really, we got Rojo, centre blind, it was playing at, at, at centre half, you know, like Smalling's come leaps and bounds. Luke Shaw, you know, got injured, you know, whatnot. Damian, he's not... I'm 50-50 with Damian. But in saying that, we haven't got on paper. You don't look at the names and go, Oh, mate, what's that team? How are we going to break that defense down? No, but somehow it just works. But again, when you praise the good with Van Hal, great defense, we're shocking going forward. But let me read this out. We only conceded nine goals at home this season in the Premier League. Nine goals all season long. Mate, fair play to Van Hal. He changed our defence from when David Moyes was there to this season. Nine goals at home. Unbelievable effort. And, and fair play to Van Hal. He got us Champions League football, Van Hal, uh, in that first season. Yep, again, he didn't get Champions League football this season. So yeah, good and a bad. Um, but the good thing about Van Hal, positives about him, he was able to bring big name players. You know, he bring De Maria to United. He bring Falcao at the time. Um, you know, he bring Memphis. Memphis was on his way to PSG. Louis Van Hal called him up. He came to United. Again, good and bad. All those three players, arguably, they didn't have their greatest seasons, you know. Uh, Manchester United, this is what Louis Van Gaal said, and this is what ultimately pisses me off. 
Louis van United, the fans have unrealistic expectations. Louis, Leicester just won the Premier League, mate. So don't give me this bullshit that United, we have unreal, uh, unrealistic uh, expectations. What a load of garbage. Louis van Gaal. Mate, and, and let's just talk about the negatives. Let's just get on to it. Negatives. For me, this, I was going to say number one, but there's so many number ones, things that pisses me off about Louis van Gaal. And, and ultimately, and I think what costed him his job is the style of play. It is utter boring, utter garbage. You always hear, you know, um, uh, Sir Bobby always saying, even um, Ferguson always used to say, the fans come for the weekend, they spend their hard-earned money, they want to be entertained. Not this garbage that Louis van Gaal was dishing out. That was terrible. That was like... How many nils nils did we have at the back end of last year? How well, I think six in a row or something like that. And then I think we went like six months, you know, having nil nils at half time and then you know we'll win one nil or win two nil or something like that. Mate, that's a garbage the style of play. Now there's got an interesting stat for you about Van Gaal his style of play. Passes per shot. Now, in 2010, under Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, 2010, we just came second in the league to Chelsea that year. I think that's the year Drogba scored that offside goal, and we ultimately uh, lost the league by a point. But anyways, getting back to my point, 2010, under Fergie, we had 37 passes per shot. So, 37 passes, and then we'll have a shot. 2016, we have 68.5 passes than a shot. That is almost double the amount of passes before we have a shot. 68 passes before we have a shot. Is that mental? Look, I don't even think Barcelona, their tiki tacta, you know, Pep Guardiola style of play, I don't even think they reach 68 passes per shot. Mate. Talk about style of play and how boring that garbage is. Ultimately, if we're going to play that style of play, I would still want goals. I would still want attacking flair. But 68 passes and we're having nil-nils and we're winning 1-0, ultimately, mate, not good enough. Not good enough. But that's just my opinion. Now, I've got another stat for you about Van Gaal. Now, Opta Joe. Good little statisticians they are. Opta Joe. Man United have averaged... 1.29 goals per game this season. That is the third lowest in Premier... That's the third lowest average in Premier League history. So, since, what, 92, 93, the Premier League started? This season, we scored an average of 1.29 goals per game. The third lowest of all time in the Premier League history. Like, I'm... That's like... That's like including, like... Against Aston Villa this year. Sunderland. I think Sunderland scored more, more goals than us this year. Sunderland. You know, it, 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 it's 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 ridiculous how bad Louis Van Gaal is. Um, uh, or how his, bad his style of play was. Not him. But his style of play. In the end, it was him that was telling the players how to play. But 1.29. Oh, mate. Now... There was an average, I was reading, we scored 49 goals this season. 49 goals in a 38 Premier League game season. That is... Now, before the Bournemouth game, the last game of the season, we were on 46 goals. So, 46 goals in a 38 game season. That is ridiculous. Consider, I think, was it a couple years ago? I think two years ago to the date... When Suarez and uh, Co, like, you know, uh, Sturridge and Sterling won fire for Liverpool under Brendan Rodgers, I think, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they got over 100 goals in a season. Considering that is, like, ridiculously good, 100 goals, we got 49, not even half of that. Not even half over a 38-game season. Think that 38 games, 49 goals. I don't know, I've repeated myself 100 times just there, but it blows my mind. And in the end, he had to go. He did deliver the FA Cup, Louis Van Gaal. He did bring in good players. But ultimately, what pissed me off the most, more than anything, that I was going to get to this point, 
what pisses me off about Louis Van Gaal and, and the reason why he had to go. Louis Van Gaal is probably the worst man management uh, coach I've ever seen working with flair players. Your likes of Anhel De Maria's, your Memphis Depay's, you know, your Radamel Falcao's, Robin Van Persie's. They're all, they're all non-existent. Louis Van Gaal is like, put a massive dint in all their careers. You know, we before um, when uh, Moyes was around, we had players like Shinji Kagawa. We had players like Nani who were doing all right. Even Raphael at right back. Man, what, can you imagine a team we would have had this year if we had Raphael at right back? We still had had Kagawa, Danny Wilbeck, even a Robin Van Persie. Even if it was just Robin Van Persie this season. Right, I know Marcus Rashford probably wouldn't, we wouldn't have seen him much this year if Robin Van, Van Persie was here. But if Robin Van Persie was here for an extra season, I would guarantee that we would have Champions League football. So, what do you want? You want Champions League football? Like, you know, it's like, mate, you, you, he's obviously got a problem with flair players. And how De Maria, he buys him for a record, a record, no, I was going to say a Manchester United record. It wasn't even a Manchester United record. It was a Premier League record, 62 million. I think we paid for Angel Di Maria, and he was here for one season. One season. That is awful. That is aw- How can you not work with him? How could... Mate, Angel Di Maria now for PSG, it saddens me how much he's dominated, dominating in the uh, French League. Be it the French League. I know it's shit. I know PSG win 6-0 every weekend, but it just kills me, the, the goals, the quality of goals and how De Maria is scoring, the passing, and, and, and to know that we had that, and we just didn't give it a chance, because our manager was just too ignorant, just to go, you're a flair player, you know, take the left wing, right wing, whatever you want to play, and, and, and own that pitch, you know, create some chances for us, but no, Van Gaal just smothered him, and didn't give him a chance, look at Memphis this season, Memphis, you know, people say he's had a piss poor season, and, and you can't really disagree with that. But at the same time, Memphis wasn't really given a chance. You know, players like that need to be given a run in the team. You know, a good, like, 10, 15 games. Look at Mark, Marcus Rashford. You know, Memphis didn't get nowhere near that. And Marcus Rashford seems to be doing all right. But ultimately, Louis Van Gaal's gone. You know, so... I'm kind of happy. I'm kind of relieved, you know. But in saying all that, though, and I'm going to be a bit controversial here saying this, and I know people are going to be upset with me, but it wouldn't be the worst decision in the world if we didn't get rid of him just for one more season. And I'll tell you why, my opinion, all right? Ultimately, I do want Mourinho here now, but let's just say we couldn't get Mourinho and we were stuck with Van Gaal for one more season, Look at all the new coaches coming into the Premier League. You got Klopp at Liverpool. You've got Conte at Chelsea. You got Pep at City. Uh, Leicester's got Ranieri, so he's only been in the job one year, but <laughs> what a good year that was. And you got Arsene Wenger at Arsenal, been there forever. Okay, so out of all those managers, there's a lot of top quality managers there who are new to the Premier League, who are going to get a massive shock. All those teams, your Chelsea, uh, City, and top uh, Tottenham, Tottenham, Tottenham are a good side. Tottenham are in a really, really good place with uh, Pochettino. He's um, he's doing wonderful things at Tottenham. But anyways, get back to my point. Um, the managers in the Premier League, the new managers, they're all going to go through massive rebuilding phases, and I think that the stability that Van Hal already had those two years, the team that he was building, we would have had a bit more of a... We would have had more stability in the season for next year. And I think with the other teams being topsy-turvy, you know, Chelsea, they'll be a bit more competitive, but at the same time, they're going to be a bit more inconsistent. Liverpool's, uh, Liverpool with a new manager is still going to be inconsistent. Um, Manchester City with Pep Guardiola... I guarantee you, I'll bet my balls they're going to be inconsistent next season. Van Gaal, an extra season, his third season, who he will know the Premier League by then. Um, I'm pretty confident Van Gaal could deliver pretty easily top four next season. But 
do we want another season the way we just had it? Boring, you know, style of play, mismanaged players. Do you want all that again? Or do you want Mourinho? It's a hard call, isn't it? it uh, that's why I say I do want Jose Mourinho, but at the same time, it wouldn't be the worst decision in the world if we had a kept Van Gaal just for one more season. But ultimately, forget all that though, he's gone. Jose Mourinho is coming. So um, I'm pumped about that. And I definitely will be making a Jose Mourinho video. Um, I'm going to do that as soon as it gets announced. So whether that is today, later tomorrow, whenever that gets announced, I'm going to give you a full video on that and, and what he can bring to United and the players he can bring. And like Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I can't wait to do that video too. That's a whole other video talking about Zlatan. That's going to be excellent. So um, stay tuned for that, lads. So um, I'm going to be making videos um, from now on, lads. And, and that's another video that I'm going to be making. Because uh, I think you guys deserve that. I'm going to make a video where have I been, what are my plans are for the channel and all that stuff. That should come out soon as well. But just got to pump out these United videos. United right now are just in a massively, massively busy place right now before the Euros start. And the Euros, oh, can't wait for that too. But um, anyways, lads, I'm your boy, Curtis 7 Stay tuned for more videos coming your way. A lot more videos coming your way. Minky, it's a busy, busy period. But until next time, take care and peace.